All right, let's get into today's video. We're gonna talk about where all the houses are. Why is there no inventory in the housing market? And this is weird. Like, why is this happening? This is not normal. This is not what usually happens. Usually when demand leaves, supply starts to go up. There are fewer homes to buy. So even if you were inclined to sell and you can afford it, you may not even find a home that you like to buy. So they hold on to it longer, which creates less inventory. And it's sort of this vicious cycle of less inventory on the market. Buyers are dropping out of the housing market in droves. And this kind of makes sense, right? Because affordability has hit the lowest point in decades, mortgage purchase applications are down, and the total number of housing sales have fallen off a cliff. And normally when demand declines like this, supply starts to shoot up. But that actually hasn't happened. Inventory, which is how we measure supply in the housing market, is up from pandemic levels. So it's come up a little bit, but it's still far below pre-pandemic levels. And this lack of inventory has prevented housing prices from going down as much as some people think they should be or will be going down. And this all comes down to supply and demand, right? If demand falls off, as it has, but supply stays low, prices can decline, but in a moderate fashion, which is exactly what we're seeing. So far, we've seen prices come down about 2 or 3%, which is sort of a modest decline from June of 2022 until now, but that's nothing like a crash that a lot of people think are going to happen. But obviously, that's just so far. What happens from here is the big question, and what happens with inventory is going to be a huge factor in answering that question. We just didn't know, will inventory go up beyond where it is now? Will it remain solidly below pre-pandemic levels? That's going to have a huge impact on the housing market over the next couple of years. So today, we're going to take a look at why inventory has remained so low and the factors that will impact inventory over the coming years to help you understand where the housing market might be going and how to make informed investing decisions based on this information. Hey, what's going on, everyone? I'm Dave Meyer, Vice President of Data and Analytics at Bigger Pockets. And if you like this type of content, if you want to stay on top of all the latest information in the housing market, you want to be an informed investor, I have two great resources for you. The first is the On The Market podcast. I am the host. It comes out every Monday and Friday. Find that on Apple, Spotify, or we have a YouTube channel, all for On The Market. Or you can follow me on Instagram where I'm at the Data Deli. Almost every day I put out new information, tips, and tricks for people who want to be informed investors. All right, let's get into today's video. We're going to talk about where all the houses are. Why is there no inventory in the housing market? So let's just take a step back and talk about what is happening in the first place. So first things first, as interest rates rise, the expectation of many, particularly those who are calling for a dramatic home crash, is that inventory would go up. This is sort of the premise of the home crash theory, right? There has to be a lot of inventory, too many houses sitting on the market. There's more supply than demand, right? The logic is this. There are X number of homes on the market. Higher rates remove a lot of buyers from the market, and that leaves more homes. You know, even if there's the same amount of homes being put up for the market, if buyers aren't there, more homes sit on the market. That means more inventory. And this is normally what happens when demand leaves a marketplace, not the housing market, but just like a normal marketplace. So for example, if you were talking about used cars, for example, if you talked about used cars in the inventory, let's say it was 100,000. I'm just making this up. Just say there's 100,000 used cars on average as the average inventory across the US, and all of a sudden half as many people want used cars, you may see used cars inventory shoot up to 130,000 or 150,000 because there's the same amount of cars being sold every single month, but with fewer buyers, more sit on the market. But this isn't what's happening in the housing market because the housing market is different. Check this out. This chart shows seasonally adjusted inventory. And again, inventory is just how many market, how many homes are for sale at any given time, usually monthly, I'm going to be talking about it monthly, on the housing market. You can see here that inventory is up from pandemic lows, which is great because inventory has been way, way, way too long. It's a lot of what fueled the insane price appreciation over the last few years, but it's remained pretty flat over the last few months. And it actually went down from December to January, which is the last data, you know, the last month we have reliable data for so you can see it's really flattened up. It's not spiking like some people are thinking that it will. That is why we're talking about this in the first place, because inventory is sort of starting to flatten out, at least for now. And I want to just make a note that this chart is on a national basis, but every market is really different. Let me just show you two. I think this is really interesting. Um, so if you first look at Boston here, I'm going to show you this chart. You can see that inventory is still insanely, insanely low. It hasn't recovered nearly at all from pandemic lows, and it is far, far below where it was pre-pandemic levels. 
Um, so you can see that inventory here hasn't recovered at all. But if you look at Austin, which is one of the boom towns during the pandemic, you can see that it is absolutely spot skyrocketed. It is way, way, way above where it was pre-pandemic. What I mean, even further above where it was during the pandemic. And so you can see that when I'm talking about averages, there are very different markets. And so when I talk about the national average, take this all with a grain of salt. What I'm trying to do here is help you understand how inventory impacts the housing market. Every market is super different, but on a national scale, demand is leaving the market and supply isn't growing. That's the weird question. So let's talk about it. Why isn't inventory growing? The short TLDR answer is because new listings are down. I just need to explain what's going on here. Inventory, what I've been talking about so far, measures how many homes are on the market in a given month. And it's this great metric because it shows the balance of supply and demand. It doesn't just show how many new homes are listed. It shows how quickly they're coming off the market as well. That's why inventory is so useful. And as we discussed, demand is down, which is one important element of inventory. But the other is how many new homes are being listed. And in the housing market, we call that new listings. And if you see on a national level, new listings are down a lot. People are just not, they're not putting their homes up for sale on the market. Or if you want to put this another way, as demand has left the market, so has new supply. And this is weird. Like, why is this happening? This is not normal. This is not what usually happens. Usually when demand leaves, supply starts to go up. The first reason this is happening is affordability. And if you watch my videos or listen to my podcast, you know that affordability is my big thing right now. That is driving the housing market and affordability is driving new listings right now. The reason the housing market works differently from other markets is because unlike a stock, when you just sell a stock, and you know, you take cash, you can do whatever you want with it. When you sell a home, you are typically looking to buy another home, right? A seller is typically a buyer. And so if the seller cannot afford to buy the new home that they want to move into, they probably won't list their property. This is often called the lock-in effect. Basically people, you know, are locked in at lower mortgage rates. And so they don't want to sell and increase their cost of living by having an a higher mortgage rate. But it's about more than that, right? It's not just about the recent change in mortgage rates. That has a big impact on affordability. But there's also more to it than that. Think about people who have bought a home over the last decade. Maybe you bought in 2014, 2015. The value of your property has gone up a lot. You have a lot of equity. You have a lot of value in that property. Then during the pandemic, you probably refinanced your home that you bought for well below current market rates down to a two or three or four percent interest rate. And so your cost of housing, the cost you pay on your mortgage right now for anyone who's bought since the Great Recession is extremely low. Now, if they want to sell and go move somewhere else, they're paying really high prices, you know, all time highs on home prices and higher mortgage rates than there have been in the last 15 years, the cost of moving to them is extremely, extremely high. So the only people who are listing their properties for sale right now are a either people who have to, you know, life happens. There are reasons that people have to sell their property. So those people are still selling or people who are in great financial positions who just have a lot of money and don't really mind paying more for their housing prices. But for everyone else, they are probably opting out of moving right now because they don't want to increase their cost of living so much. That's probably the main reason in my mind why new listings are down. But there's actually a second really interesting reason why new listings are down based on a, a new report from Redfin that I've been looking at that shows that the amount of people time people spend in their homes has nearly doubled, nearly doubled since 2005. Check out this chart. You can see that back in 2005, people moved and basically sold their home every six and a half years. Then it peaked in about 2020, which kind of makes sense because of the pandemic at 13.4 years. That's more than double. It's come down a little bit to about 12.3%. And we'll see if this trend continues, but I would be surprised if it went much down, much further down than it is right now. And this is really wild, right? And it makes sense, right? This is a great reason why new people aren't listing their homes. They're staying longer. That means the average number of times a home hits the market in its useful life is declining. And so there's just going to be less inventory. And this to me is really interesting because this could point at sort of a permanent lowering of inventory if this trend continues. You know, because this is such a big thing that could be impacting the market for years to come, I just wanted to quickly explain what Redfin says are the reasons why people are staying longer. Number one, older Americans are aging in place. 
Nearly 90%, 90% of Americans want to stay in their home as they get older. So there's this theory that people are hoarding the homes. That's kind of true because 90% of Americans want to stay in place as they get older. That's happening at a time when our population is also growing older. Our demographics in the U.S. are skewing older and older. 17% of U.S. is over 65, up from 13% in 2010. And there's just this sort of lack of affordability as well. As I talked about, there's another reason that people are staying in their homes longer is because they have such good deals comparatively to what they could get. Now, the fourth reason is that rents are super high, so some owners are renting their places rather than selling, and so they transact on those homes less. And the last reason is also because of low inventory. It's this cycle, right? There are fewer homes to buy, so even if you were inclined to sell and you can afford it, you may not even find a home that you like to buy, so they hold on to it longer, which creates less inventory, and it's sort of this vicious cycle of less inventory on the market. Overall, just to summarize what we've been talking about here, inventory, which is basically supply in the housing market, has leveled off, at least for now, and this is happening even though demand has fallen off dramatically, which is unusual. And this is happening because fewer people are listing their homes for sale. And from what we can tell, this is due to two reasons. The inaffordability of moving. People have better deals in their current homes and they don't want to move. And the average length of time people stay in their home is increasing. So fewer and fewer people are listing their homes for sale. Of course, we're going to have to wait to see what happens, but this is super important. And I encourage you all to take a keen look at this in your market because inventory is a great lead indicator for pricing and lead indicator basically just means it helps predict future other metrics so inventory is a very good lead indicator for which direction housing prices are going to move if inventory starts to go up again we should expect price declines deeper you know deeper price declines or basically it puts downward pressure on prices higher higher inventory downward pressure on prices if inventory stays level or it declines that puts either you know that might stay flat or it might put upward pressure on prices so those are things that you should be taking careful look at in your market because remember my analysis the high level stuff i've been talking about is on a national level but if you want to understand your local market i recommend you check out these two metrics and keep a close eye on them in the coming months inventory and new listings check them out Redfin has a great free tool you can use for that, redfin.com slash data center, or just Google Redfin data center. It has it for all the large major metros, it's completely free. I recommend you check that out. All right, thank you all for listening and watching. I appreciate all of you. If you have any questions for me, either put them in the comments below, or you can hit me up on Instagram where I'm at the data deli. Thanks again. I'll see you next week for another video.